took them seriously. Maybe we should have. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Better to start at the beginning with the abduction of Desmond Miles, my son. This boy had no ambition, no direction, no plans for the future. What he did have was a heritage, one he chose to deny. It nearly cost him his life. He was captured and imprisoned. Those who took him believed he could help them find something. The apple. One of several artifacts we call Pieces of Eden. Bits of ancient technology scattered across the globe. Some hidden, some found, all of them dangerous. Most are held by a single group, the same group that now had Desmond. You know them as Abstergo Industries. We know them as the Templars, as the enemy. We've been fighting them for thousands of years, even longer if you believe the stories of their origins. I do. After all, I've seen the truth. That's the beauty and the horror of the Animus. A device that allows us to enter and experience the lives of our ancestors. It holds the power to change everything, to show us history the way it really happened. Up until its creation, to the victor went the spoils, went the truth. We're trying to fix that, to free minds and bodies both. But there's only so much that we can do, and the Templars have the upper hand these days. But something larger than the Assassins and Templars is approaching, bigger than all of us. And if we can't find a way to stop it, these next few weeks will probably be our last. Everyone's last. In the end, it all comes down to him, to Desmond. Through the Animus, he discovered his heritage, explored the lives of his ancestors, and uncovered their secrets. When that was done, he trained. He used another ancestor to provide decades of experience in the span of a few days. It worked. We think. We hope. Soon, though, soon we'll know. That ominous date fast approaches, December 21st, 2012. None of us knows what it'll bring, only that this is where they want us to be, when it does. They've been guiding us in their own fractured, frustrating way. These voices from the first civilization, the ones who came before, a precursor race of immense power and uncertain motives. They're the ones who made the pieces of Eden. This is where they've led him, and through him, us. He stands at the entrance to this long lost place, armed with the knowledge of Altair and the abilities of Ezio. He holds in his hands the apple of Eden, and we stand at his side, ready to support him however we can. His name is Desmond Miles, and he has brought us to the end. We're here. Let's go.
In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again. triggered a bleeding effect. You collapsed and entered into a fugue state. So naturally, you dropped me into the Animus instead of, I don't know, making sure I was okay? You weren't in any danger. Besides, the temple appeared to be communicating with you, and I didn't want to risk severing the connection. At least not until we knew what it wanted. Right. Of course. Son, I... No, it's fine. I get it. And I know what I'm looking for, by the way. It's a key. Just no idea where it is, though. I guess that's why she triggered the bleeding effect. She? Juno, Dad. She's talking to me. Okay, Desmond. While you were, uh, visiting Constantinople, we picked up a software update for the Animus. I'd like to run a couple of quick tests, make sure there aren't any major issues. All right. What do you need me to do? We'll start simple. Walk to the marker over there.
Okay, Desmond. Let's practice climbing on these objects. Run your way through this little obstacle course. That's a constraint. These are optional objectives that raise your synchronization rate. All right, Desmond, follow the on-screen instructions and kill the two Templars. All you have to do here is jump the gap.
synchronization levels look good now. We should be able to build the world. Time to find out what the temple wants from you. Sir? Sir? Everything all right, sir? Yes, fine. I'm just preoccupied, that's all. Don't forget your invitation. Master Birch will be meeting you inside. Thank you. Where shall I retrieve you once you're done? Front of the Opera House. And be quick about it. Don't expect to be here long. I'll bring her round at once. Invitation, please. Shall I take your coat, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to kindly find your seats. Good evening, sir. This way, please. My apologies. Hatham? Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. No, I'm afraid it won't. On to business then. Do you see him? He's seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. I already have. It is but fitting that we should protect and encourage streets since we live by them. Black Maul, that sick word of trial, comes on in the afternoon, and she hopes you will order matters so as to bring her off. A thousand pardons. Uh, my apologies. Tom Gag, sir, is found guilty. A lazy dog. When I took him the time before, I told him what would come to if he did not mend his hand. This is death without reprieve. I may mention a book. Poor Tom Gag. Oh, Tom Gag. 
Make haste and you be quiet. And pay friends know where I intend. For I love to make them easy one way or other. When a gentleman is long kept in suspense, penitence may break his spirit ever after. Besides, certainty gives a man a good air upon his trial and makes him risk another without fear or scruple. But all the way, for it is a pleasure to be the messenger of comfort to friends in affliction. But tis now I time to look about me for a decent execution for against next session. I ain't a lazy rogue by whom one can get nothing till he's hanged. Crook fingered Jack. A year and a half in the service. Let me see how much the stock goes to his industry. One, two, three. I've got a bit of stage four. fright. A little Dutch car drop with a bloom in your cheek. And seven silver ones. A mighty clean downed fellow. Sixteen snuff boxes. Five of them true gold. Six dozen of handkerchiefs. Four silver elfin swords. Half a dozen of shirts. Three tie parry wigs. And a piece of broad cloth. <laughs> Considering these right. are only the fruits of his leisure now, Jeremy's a I don't know a pretty fellow. Tonight but no is man alive hath a more engaging presence of mind upon the road. What dreary, alias, brown wheel, an irregular dog, who has an underhanded way of disposing of his goods. I'll try him only for a session. Hey, 
you should have come to me. We would have found another way. Yes. But then you would have known. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. As am I.